This is the third and last video on determinacy and stability. In this part, we cover stability. In part one, we did an introduction to the concepts and saw how we derive the equations for determinacy. In part two, we saw examples of how we calculate the degree of indeterminacy, or DOI. In this video, we define stability, we identify how difficult it is to determine stability and why, and then we see some examples. I'll start here with a definition of stability. A structure is stable if it will not form a mechanism under any loading. Let's look at what it means to form a mechanism. We can classify this into two different types of mechanisms. Mechanisms due to inadequate external supports and mechanisms due to inadequate internal configurations. Let's see an example of the former. On the left-hand side is a moment-resisting frame, and it's supported by three rollers at the base. If you calculate with the equations given in previous videos, you would calculate that the degree of indeterminacy is 6. So based on DOI alone, we can't tell that this is unstable. However, if there were any kind of lateral load, this structure would move laterally. This is an inadequate external support. The other kind of instability is due to an inadequate internal configuration. Consider the truss here. If you were to calculate based on the equations in previous videos, you would calculate that DOI is zero. This would mean that it's statically determinate. However, the configuration of the internal members is not stable. And this is the mechanism that the truss can form. Right now, I want to make a little aside and talk about why stability is so difficult to determine. If you do happen to find some evidence of instability, then you're lucky. You've proven that the structure is unstable. On the other hand, if you don't find evidence of instability, you're still never 100% sure that it's stable. This means that seeing stability in a structure is an art. There's no equation that you can apply to determine it. It requires experience to do it well. This reminds me of a famous quote that says that good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment. What does this mean for you? There's no other way to get good at this than practice, practice, practice. I'll outline this to you by going over a flowchart of the procedure that you would follow to determine stability. The easy path is the following. You look for instability, you end up finding it, and you can conclude easily that the structure is unstable. The difficulty comes if you don't find it. If you don't find it, at some point you have to ask yourself, have I looked long enough for instability? If you say that you haven't looked long enough, you're gonna go back and you're gonna look again, see if you find it. Ask yourself once more if you've looked enough. If you haven't, you're going to go back through that cycle and look again. At some point, you haven't found a sign of instability. You decide you've looked enough. Unfortunately, you still haven't proven the structure to be stable. You can be more or less certain that it actually is, but you'll never know using this approach 100% for sure. Next, we'll look at some examples. First, we'll look at global instability. And I'll present to you three ways that you can tell that the structure is globally unstable. Global means that we're considering simply the external reactions of the structure. In one case, you could have less than three reactions, as is shown in the diagram. That block, acting under the influence of gravity, for instance, would clearly rotate about the pin. That is not a stable structure. The next example we saw earlier in this video. Shown in red are the lines of action of each of the rollers. The force at each of those rollers is vertical, and those lines of action are parallel to each other. In that case, there's no resistance perpendicular to those lines of action, and the structure is unstable in that direction. The last example is the hardest to see. Here I'm showing a structure supported by three rollers, and I'm showing the lines of action of those three rollers. And what's crucial here is that the lines of action all meet at a common point. In other words, 
the reactions are concurrent. In this case, the configuration of external reactions has no resistance to an externally applied moment. There's no resistance to rotation. Now let's look at how you would know if you have instability in the internal configuration. If you calculate DOI to be less than zero, that's easy. You're done. You know that the structure is unstable. But if you haven't, you still need to look at other sources of instability. And there are two main ways that you can go about looking for this. One is to identify a mechanism. If you can physically think of how this structure might move unrestrained, you can show it to be unstable. The other way is you can apply any load, an arbitrary load to your structure, and try to find an inconsistency in equilibrium. We'll see this by example shortly. If we consider the previous truss, we already saw how it can form a mechanism. Let's see how we can identify an inconsistency in equilibrium. Now to do this, I'll apply an arbitrary load to this truss. Some loads might show an inconsistency, other loads might not. You need to play around with this. I'll apply the load shown, and given that load, the reactions are the ones that are shown here. Those reactions need to be there to support this truss. Now we'll determine some member forces by inspection by looking at a few of the different joints. If we look at the joint that's highlighted, I've shown the joint configuration there in darker lines, we can identify that the vertical member is a zero force member. Moving up to the next joint above, I'm showing the joint configuration, but I'm not showing the vertical member because I've determined it to be a zero force member. The other two members shown are two members joining at an angle. We know again by our methods of determining zero force members that the two members are themselves zero force members. And so we've identified three zero force members. If I now move to the bottom right joint, I've shown the joint configuration there. Let's look at that joint in more detail. These are the two forces that are involved. The reaction, which I've called R, a force in the horizontal member, and shown in dashed black, the zero force member. Vertical equilibrium tells me that the sum of the forces in the vertical direction, which in this case is equal to R, is zero. But previously, from global equilibrium, I determined that that reaction had to be there. So method of joints tells me that R is equal to zero. Global equilibrium tells me that R is not equal to zero. This inconsistency implies instability. In this next example, we'll identify a mechanism. Identifying mechanisms is easy for some people, difficult for other people. Here you need to really visualize structures physically. The hinges in the beams offer no resistance to rotation. So the angle between the column and the beams is free to change with no resistance whatsoever. And this whole frame can simply fall over laterally. Once again, you have to think physically. Some of you have this skill, some of you are still building it. Let's look at this same example with a different method. Here, we're trying to find an inconsistency in the equations of equilibrium. If I consider the frame shown in terms of global equilibrium, I'll apply an arbitrary lateral load. The reactions at the pins must be as follows. I'll focus especially on the vertical forces. The arbitrary horizontal force at the top acts over a certain moment arm. That causes a moment. So the vertical forces must be separated by a distance equal and opposite in magnitude to result in a moment with no net force. That's why they're both shown as equal in magnitude, and I'm calling that magnitude R, opposite in direction. So what I've determined from global equilibrium is that R is not equal to zero. Let's look now at exploded equilibrium. Here I've taken the same diagram, except for I've replaced the two beams, which are two force members, by the equivalent force, either in tension or compression. I've drawn the directions of those forces arbitrarily. Equilibrium in the vertical direction says that the sum of forces in that direction has to be equal to zero. Well, the only force in that direction is R, so this tells us that R is equal to zero. Now, once again, global equilibrium tells us one answer. Exploded or internal equilibrium tells us another answer. That inconsistency implies instability. 
And now we've arrived at the end of the three videos. Let's go back to the chart that I presented in the first video. We classify our structures according to the degree of indeterminacy and according to the stability check. In previous videos, we saw that the DOI or degree of indeterminacy is equal to the number of unknowns minus the number of available statics equations. And there are two different expressions that we can use depending on whether your structure is a frame or whether your structure is a truss. In this video, we did the stability check and we saw that there are several different ways to show that a structure is unstable. A structure is unstable if DOI is less than zero, if it has less than three reactions, if the reactions are collinear, meaning that the lines of action all meet at a single point. The structure is unstable if the reactions are parallel. The structure is unstable if you can visualize a mechanism that forms. Or if you try to perform equilibrium calculations and you find an inconsistency. In all those cases, you can determine that a structure is unstable. And as you build experience, and if you're judicious and careful with your work, lack of any of that evidence is a pretty good indicator that your structure is stable. This concludes the three video series.